Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the Mogami class frigates from the Japanese Navy. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, let's get right into it. Fact 1. Built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. When the Japanese Navy needed a new class of frigate warships, they looked to several Japanese defense contractors in order to build them. And so the first three companies that participated in the proposals was Japanese Mitsubishi Heavy Industry, the Mitsui Engineering and Shipbuilding, and also the Japan Marine United. All three companies made different designs and proposals, and ultimately the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries was selected as the primary contractor while the Mitsui Engineering and Shipbuilding was a secondary subcontractor. The ships are built in both Nagasaki, which is the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries shipyard, as well as the Mitsui Engineering and Shipbuilding shipyard in Tamano City, Okayama. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 2. No engine control. A relatively new innovation in the Mogami class frigates is that the engine does not have a control room. Typically, with ships of this size, there's usually a dedicated engine control room to manage the engines. However, the Mogami frigate class, in a bid to reduce crew and expense, selected a model where there is no engine control room or crew and they made the engine room and the engine unmanned. And so the engine can be started and stopped directly from the command control center. And also, they have automated system to send seawater into the engines for cooling and fresh water generation. By having the entire engine system and propulsion system fully controlled by wire, there is no need for a actual engine control room and the ship's crew can simply control it from a control panel on top of the control center or the ship's main control areas. This is a very unique capability to reduce crew and dangers in operating the engines. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3. Reduction in crew size. One of the major goals of the Mogami Frigate class is to reduce the amount of crew necessary to operate this ship. The reason is many folds. Number one is the fact that with the less number of crew, they could have less number of people operating it, and with less soldiers, they can rotate them very quickly so that the ship can be out at sea and in production or in deployment as much as possible. They achieve this by combining the ship's living quarters together. There are no more officers or enlisted member cafeterias that are separate. Everybody lives and eats in the same place. This consolidation allows them to save space and to save the number of crew. Another big advantage of the reduction in crew size is the fact that they can build less materials. They can build the ships with less bunks and less crew facilities, thereby reducing the cost of building this type of frigate. Alright, let's get into the fact 4. Top speed of 30 knots. During the design phase of the Mogami frigates, there was talk about using jet propulsion for achieving high speeds such as 40 knots similar to the United States Navy's littoral combat ships. Water jet propulsion is probably the fastest way to get in and out of the water. However, there was concerns that water jet propulsion spends way too much fuel. Another big consideration in designing this ship was that it has to be low fuel consumption. This has many reasons as well. Number one is low fuel consumption means the ship can have a greater operating range. And second, it doesn't need to carry as much fuel as necessary compared to water jet propulsion ships. 
Another big issue is the engine room that we were talking about earlier in the previous section. They intended to make the engine completely unmanned and controlled, and with a smaller engine and more compact with less fuel consumption, it is more easily achievable. Water jet propulsion is typically not possible to be self-contained and fully unmanned. And so, this ship combines low fuel consumption with a relatively good speed of 30 knots. Alright, let's get into the next and final fact, electronic warfare. A first look at the Mogami frigates, you'll see on top of the frigate are tons and tons of sensors, radars, antennas, and so forth. At the very top, the compound antenna is the sole communications and surveillance antenna for electronic awareness. There's a whole bunch of radio detection and jamming devices, and also multifunctional radars installed in multiple areas. In addition, radar wave omnidirection detection antennas and communication wave band direction antennas are all integrated into the composite of the ships, making it seamless and at the same time highly effective to thwart enemy electronic surveillance. There are also many different sensors on top of the ships in order to have situational awareness and command and control or C4ISR. On top of the NORA50 integrated antenna are a whole bunch of atypical sensors that are designed in order to gather intelligence data from around the ship in order to improve situational awareness. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.